Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Chop the Rock. I am Diana Long, Director of River Market Operations, and our guest chef this week is Kelly Bass, Executive Director of Museum of Discovery. Thank you for having me, Diana. Welcome. Appreciate Thank it. you so much. Sure. So at the museum, y'all y'all don't really have a restaurant or cook a lot, but you do the science of cooking sometimes. We do. There's a ton of science in cooking. You know, it's all the way things transform, the way proteins break down, all of that. So while we do, we do a little bit of that in our camps, we have summer camps that are very popular. In fact, you need to get on and sign up at museumdiscovery.org if you haven't already. Um, and then um, we also are a regular stop on the Clinton um, Center's culinary camp that they do each summer. And then we, at our Science After Dark event, which is our really popular adults-only event, we have usually at least one uh, one of those a year, we do nine of those a year. The last Thursday of each month, um, January through um, September, is food-based. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. And you also are a really good home cook. Well, I like to cook. Um, I've been a foodie and a restaurant guy. I've reviewed restaurants around this town. I, it was funny, I was walking by Ariana's Pizza smelling how good it smelled and realized I wrote the review when it opened in 1988. Oh, wow. So I've been around for a while. Yes, <laughs> and yes. so have they. Yeah, so have they. That's they a have. good sign That's in the right. restaurant business. It is, it yeah. is. So, so what are we cooking today here? You've got a great looking pasta dish for well, us. Yeah, I just call it shrimp pasta toss. Uh, it's something I, I kind of developed when I was on Weight Watchers and looking for ways to have really good food that didn't burn a lot of Weight Watchers points, which kind of equals calories. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is a very versatile dish too. I've chosen, shrimp's always there for me. It doesn't have to be, it could be chicken, it could be something else. Um, and then I use, in this dish, I'm using tomatoes, asparagus, and mushrooms. But suit yourself, I've done it with zucchini, done it with squash, you could use eggplant, you know, anything. I mean, I doubt you'd want to use corn or beans, but most any vegetable that's a similar style, uh, not hard to make, and again, each very ample serving, as we'll see later, has about 400 calories, which mm. is about like a, a lean cuisine, or maybe a little more than a you know healthy choice or a lean cuisine. So without all the extra sodium that exactly, you get in and a it's frozen. and preservatives and things, and right. it's um, it's real real easy to make. Well, I'm excited. And you could substitute. You mentioned some of the things that we have at our farmers market when they're in sure. season that you could substitute out, like the zucchini or the eggplant right. or, or any just number. really good crook neck yellow squash mm -hmm. works great. Mm -hmm. Yes, just anything, yes. You know, you'd like to pull out and uh, and saute a little bit. And then that's the thing that everybody will see is we're going to, you know, kind of get all these things ready and then it all comes together back in the pasta pot and we'll toss it and serve it. Sounds good. Let's get going. Okay. All right. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do, I'll tell you, I'm going to put make you the, the, the chopper. If gotcha. That's okay. All right. So if you want to work on the mushrooms, and those are so big, I'd go just across and then I'd maybe go this way a little bit. Okay, we we so want decent size. Chunky dice. Yeah. And then the same thing on the tomatoes, just cut them in half, basically. Okay. Just so they'll have a little more surface area. I'm going to start just use, I'm just going to use it right here. One thing about asparagus, people wonder, you know, about the woody end of it. Yes. Sometimes if you just take it, it'll break. In the, the natural spot, you, break. The natural break. So I'm going to just bust these off and we'll get those ready to go. And then we'll, we'll chop those up a little bit. Everything want, you want it to be bite size. Um, so that it fills yeah. a fork. And I'm, yeah, and I made this just, um, my wife and I had this just a, a few days ago. So it was fresh on my mind. To talk to the those folks in TV land about That's something right. good to make. Well, and you know, so many people have so little time for just spending hours and hours in the kitchen. And when you can come up with a dish that's healthy and tasty, mm -hmm. and sure. it doesn't take just all day long. Nice. The, the one ingredient, and you and I talked about this before we got started, that I didn't mention yet is goat cheese. And you know, yes. you can get it crumbled now. I mean, it's just in the in the either the deli case or over by the other cheeses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it comes in a four ounce tub, and that whole tub has 320 calories. Which, when you spread it across, we're making three servings. This recipe is easily skinnied up or made bigger, however you want to do it. You know, it's it's ultimately uh, adjustable by volume. Good deal. So you're doing a good job chopping. About the time you get done chopping that, we're gonna get you to chop up the asparagus. Gotcha. Since you got your knife working so well. And I will throw away this leftover asparagus. Very pot. good. Which, to be honest with you, you know, if you could save them and you could put them in a stock or you could use them just for flavoring. Oh, that is a in, good in point. In this situation, we're probably just going to let them go. Let them go. But yeah. yeah, I mean, we do have a lot of food waste in in that goes on because people don't know what to do with yeah. things like that. But there's no reason why you, you can couldn't turn that, that into a. As part of a vegetable stock. 
Right, or like yeah. even a cream of asparagus soup. Oh yeah, mm, that sounds um, better all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so while we're chopping these, let's talk a little bit more. Tell us all a little bit more about what y'all have going on. Like I know okay. the museum is for kids, but well, I've been in there a dozen times and have had just as much fun as an that's adult. That's one of the big misconception that I have to constantly talk to people about. I just had someone this week say, Oh, well, I haven't been there because my, ne my nieces have all grown up. I was like, you'd have a great time yourself. Right. We have plenty of adults who come on their own. And uh, again, our adult night, Science After Dark, which again, in the last Thursday of the month, January through September, it's $10, same as normal museum um, admission, free for members. Some people buy memberships just to get into Science After Dark. Right, and right. The museum. Um, we always have a theme, uh, a science theme, and everybody loves that part of it. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and I'm going to let you just toss it. We'll go ahead and put these in here. There. Okay. Yeah, we just have a little bit of oil in the pan. We don't really need much because these mushrooms are going to throw off a bunch of liquid on their own. They are. I'm going to go ahead and get that started. So we're just going to saute. Saute those mushrooms and let them get going. And then if you want to, yeah, we'll cut those in two and then we can kind of cut All of these. them? Yeah, all okay. of them. Um, so Adults love the museum of discovery. Sometimes you watch mothers and fathers kind of elbowing their kid out of the way to get on into it. <laughs> exactly. But you know, we our mission is to ignite a passion for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, or STEAM education. Mm -hmm. People always talk about STEM, but really arts are a big part of it these days, particularly with design. You know, with computers, iPhones are about design. You know, and, and apps are about design. Games are about design. So we, we really and we do a lot of arts-based activities. We have a a really cool place in the museum called the Tinkering Studio, where every day mm -hmm. we have um, an activity that's a hands-on making activity, and we have dozens of them that we alternate, usually by the month. So it just gives something fresh beyond our 90 hands-on, permanent hands-on interactive exhibits for, for folks to do. And then we have uh, special events. Just uh, every January we do Star Wars science. We had about 1,500 people who yes. came recently for that. Um, we have Tinkerfest, which is our biggest day of the, of the year. We have usually 33,000 to 3,500 folks. That's when the kind of activities we do in the Tinkering Studio take over the entire museum. And spill out into the street. Oh yeah, we have about three blocks that are, that are three blocks of street right. that, are, that are cordoned off. And we have cool, the kind of things you want to do outside, make big messes, blow things up, you know, the kind of stuff that we get a little nervous about doing in the museum itself. <laughs> right, right. You know, I'm going to go ahead and turn yeah. our water on for yeah, our... Yeah, let's get the pasta going. You can put that on pretty much high, I think. Oh, and then let's go ahead and get this going. We're just going to blanch this asparagus after Diana gets it cut up. Yes. Keep moving on the tomatoes. I could probably be helping, as a matter of fact. Looks like there's... I got a You've chopping, got a great got story to tell. I've got a chopping thing right here. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Again, then we have a big spring, our, our fall fundraiser. The, we have other events that we have sponsors for, but they don't feel like fundraisers because we're not asking you to buy a special ticket. Right. You don't have to dress up. We don't have to, you know, rent tables and chairs and have a caterer. But, but sometimes you want to do that, and yeah. that's when Spark comes Spark, in. And that's, that's this, this year in 2018, that's going to be the second Tuesday in um, November. Okay. We all know you on the first Tuesday, but there's some pretty important elections will be happening that day. You are correct. And so we decided, why, why make people decide if they want to stay home and watch election returns or if they want to come to Spark? So that's something that we're going to do. That's a good thing to yeah. think about so there. We, we moved it. So that's a big fun event. Okay, we have tomatoes ready. Yep. So I also love about this recipe that you're sharing with us is that this is very much a one pot kind of dish. Yeah. Like, all in all, we're gonna dirty up three pots here. Yeah, we're gonna get these. We're gonna get these cooked down, and then we're gonna do the, the asparagus and the. We're gonna get the asparagus blanching over here. Did we get that started yet? No, we did not. So in the uh, in the big pot in the back, we put just about a quarter of an inch of water in there, and so then once that comes up to a pretty good boil, uh, blanching. Um, is when you just throw something in just just long enough like maybe a minute or two and yeah, that's two, it two or three you know people vary in their taste on asparagus like pasta like asparagus like green beans i like mine a little more cooked gotcha. a little more southern style but it won't take long at all on those we'll get this we'll get the mushrooms kind of down and then we'll um, throw the tomatoes in there mm -hmm. and that's the thing about this dish too then we'll then we'll do the shrimp and the shrimp are really quick too um but you kind of just 
cook something, put it to the side, and it'll all come together at the end. Right. So you can toss it back, and the, yeah. the ambient heat from what you've just cooked warms it all the way through. It's perfectly yeah. Yeah, the Yeah, the right hot pasta kind of takes care of things. Right, right, And right. helps melt the goat cheese, too. So we'll be in, we'll be in good shape. That does sound like yeah. good shape. So, so one of the other things, we were just talking about Spark. Mm -hmm. um, y'all, don't y'all do some, um, like some science related, there's some awards that, that y'all give out to some folks in the community for their yeah, work. Yeah, that, that's part of Spark. We have, we honor Spark stars who are Kansans who've had successful careers in fields that require the intensive study of science, technology, engineering, and math primarily. And uh, a lot of them are not well known, some are better known. And then we end up uh, having a luncheon that we do the week before Spark where we honor them and let them talk a little bit about what ignited their passion. Because our, our mission is to ignite a passion for what we call STEAM education. Mm -hmm. So these folks who all had successful careers as engineers, computer programmers, doctors, researchers, chemists, something along the way ignited their passion. Otherwise, they'd have been like me and been an English major sitting under a tree reading a novel <laughs> instead of going to physics and differential equations. I think we've about got these done. Let's now throw the tomatoes in there. Okay. All right, so one of the things that I really, um, Kathy Webb did a show with us. When we, the very, very first one, we did um, Hunger Relief Alliance, um, and she was amazing. And I, I had kind of bought these just for the convenience of it because of the storage. And she's the one that, that brought us this one that you're using yeah. here. Um, but one of the things that we discovered, and how I bought them for home, too, is you, you can get these great little um, cutting plastics yes. uh, um, board. Yeah. yeah as opposed to a cutting board they come color coded so the green ones are for vegetables okay. the yellow ones are chicken the blue sure. ones are fish the red ones are beef so that you don't ever have any kind of cross contamination issue idea. they're super cheap i think i've just added something to my shopping list because right? I, I get sick of the well the, on the board yes. yeah, like in fact we just i'm about did. to put this asparagus in right isn't now. that wonderful yeah because, uh, you know, in the cutting boards, too, you want to make sure they're clean. They don't fit well in the dishwasher. I'm yep. all the time scrubbing them, you mm -hmm. know, and they kind of get to looking funky. Sometimes we take some sandpaper and just kind of take the top layer off. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, these are going well. This is a great stove. I mean, I would say I need to take this home, but it'd be tough to get it up to my condo. I would imagine that would take up quite yeah. a lot of space in the elevator. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get this stuff going. The pasta is about ready to throw in. So, so you'll notice that the one thing with this dish is that it is not going to be just super laden with a bunch of salt or but no. it's going to be, um, you know, some these tomatoes make their own juices. The mushrooms kind of make their own juices. Right. The pasta will be a little bit moist. You're going to put a little bit of, of garlic and Italian. A little garlic powder, a little Italian seasoning. We'll season up the shrimp. In fact, we can do that anytime you're ready. Anytime. Do we, do we have one of these we'd like to use for that? Sure. There should be... We got a there's, red one. Yeah, if there's you know, not a, we can take this one. We'll just go with that one. There we go. So I've got about a half pound of shrimp. Um, I just, you know, buy them frozen, and then let them thaw and, and get them and get them um, peeled. I, I didn't bother us taking our time showing people how to peel shrimp because I figured everybody kind of knows that. But this please little, don't forget about, to peel them. This is about eight ounces. No, don't forget to peel. This is about eight ounces of shrimp. Okay. We're going to take some garlic powder. So we're just going to shake a little garlic powder, and this is the same thing as far as being versatile. If you don't like garlic, don't like Italian seasonings, put whatever you want. Maybe some Cajun seasonings yeah, would be really Cajun good seasonings. on there I'm if that's get what you like. a little bit of garlic powder on, on these. Maybe more than a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of Italian seasoning. You can tell I like mine, I bite in the big, mm -hmm. the big kahuna here. Whoa, a little more than I needed. All right. It's cheap, we can waste a little bit. There you go. And then we're going to finish it off with a little bit of salt and pepper. Just a tad. You can move those tomatoes around just a little bit. Got it, you got Thank it. You. Same thing with salt and pepper. Some people's like, I have a friend who doesn't salt anything because he says you can always salt it after it comes out, which is true. But I, I know this dish and I know our taste buds and a little salt and pepper. Ooh, our, um, so our water uh, is also ready for our pasta. So I'm gonna go right. ahead and put that in there. Yep, and that's six ounces of pasta. This is, this is three servings worth. So we have four ounces of goat cheese, which is what comes, three ounces, uh, six ounces of pasta, eight ounces of shrimp, and then just a, a thing of asparagus, the nature sweet tomatoes, which I adore. They just seem to have, when, when I buy 
from the farmer's market when they're in season mm -hmm. tomatoes. But when they're not in season, the Nature Sweets have more tomato taste than any that I've found. Yes. And then I, we're using the baby bellas, the baby portobello mushrooms, but any mushroom would do. Right, so whatever your preference. Yeah. Although I have to say that the baby, any kind of portobello is just yeah. gonna have that meaty texture they do, and that and they rich just, flavor. Yeah. Oh, these are just about there too. Yeah, those are perfect, they look great. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we've cooked our mushrooms and we've cooked our tomatoes mm -hmm. and we've got those um, kind of just combined in the pot, just sitting off to the side where we can keep them warm. Right. At this point, we're just waiting on our pasta. And we're about to do our shrimp. So we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Ranked among the nation's best value cities for travel and its most travel-worthy state capitals, Little Rock is known for its southern charm and hospitality. Request a vacation planning kit at littlerock.com and see why we say getaways are better with a southern accent. We are back. We have prepared our tomatoes and we've prepared our mushrooms and they're kind of sitting a little bit. We got um, the asparagus blanching, we got the pasta boiling, and we're about to do the shrimp. And we are about to do the shrimp, but yep. we have a couple more minutes left on our pasta. So mm -hmm. while we do, since the shrimp really only takes a couple of minutes, couple of minutes yep. and so we want everything to be good and fresh and warm. And so there's a couple of things that, that we wanted to talk about with Museum of Discovery right. that we have not mentioned yet. Um, so let me go ahead and stir pasta. our pasta. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it down just, just a hair. We don't want it to boil, boil over. It won't hurt anything. It does make um, for pretty TV though. It does, and nobody <laughs> wants to clean up that mess <laughs> exactly. afterwards. We're gonna be full from our great uh, yeah. meal that we've had here. So, okay, so you guys have, um, y'all did a huge renovation several we years did. ago. We did and we, we closed, we got a $9.2 million grant from the Reynolds Foundation, Donald W. Dobby, Donald w. Reynolds Foundation. We raised 1.8 match locally and then we closed the museum in April of 11 and reopened in January of 12. So we've now been open for six years as this new museum and our attendance has been way higher. It's amazing the difference yeah, between, it's, about it's six, two about different 60, museums. It is, about 60% uh, higher attendance. Um, and we also um, continue to draw school field trips from all over. We had 158,000 people who came to the museum in 2016. I haven't seen all the 17 numbers yet. But we, um, of that 158,000, 60,000 of them were school children on field trips. Doesn't mm -hmm. count when the kids come on the weekends, doesn't count when the kids come in the summer. And they came from 62 of the 75 counties in Arkansas and nine other states. But one thing that did not get renovated when we were, did the big renovation in 2011 was Room to Grow, which is our gallery for our six and under crowd. And we have a ton of six and unders. Yes. About 58% of the kids one to 12 who come not on field trips, but just come as public admission are six and younger. So we just put some money and time into that. We reopened Room to Grow the week of Thanksgiving of 2017. And our, I just did some numbers. Our membership sales, our attendance have gone through the roof uh, for the end of November and for um, December. And then we do events, you know, outside the museum. We, not everything we do is inside the wall. So we have, of course, Tinkerfest, we've already talked about. We have an event in May called Mestival. It's the art and the science of making messes. And kids love it because the parents are like, hey, you're gonna make a mess and not be in trouble. Right. And you don't have to clean it up. And we don't have to clean it up. And we don't either, So yeah. we have all kinds of cool stuff out in the streets, big foam explosions and all kinds of crazy things. Um, so it's a really a, a whole bunch of fun too. And then something we're super excited about, and depending on when folks see this show, uh, April 7th, 2018, the Museum of Discovery will be the presenting uh, body for Spring Fest, which you know, in 2016, River Fest split into two parts. Spring Fest took all the family fun activities and made it a free event. Yes. Free family event here in the River Market, in the Wildly River, in, in Riverfront Park. Riverfront Park, the amphitheater, and um, the pavilions. Mm -hmm. And the Convention and Visitors Bureau has been very generous to us to let us do that again without any cost to the museum. Because after Riverfest went down for the count, so to speak, people were, what's gonna happen with Spring Fest? Because it's such a great festival and yes. it's free and family fun. So we have taken that over with the help of at least 60, maybe closer to 90 folks who worked on Riverfest 
who to be frank and honest about it, they miss each other. Mm -hmm. They didn't used to have to think about when am I going to see Bob or when am I going to see Sally because they had meetings all year about Riverfest. Well, now Riverfest is gone and they're helping with Springfest. So that's, that's Saturday, April the 7th, and we hope to have 25 to 30,000 people. We've got the Super Retriever Series, we've got bounce houses, we've got rock climbing walls, we've got Rough on the River uh, Puppy Parade. Yes. We've got all kinds of museum of discovery related hands-on activities kind of replacing some of the traditional arts and crafts. We'll still have face painting and some things like that, but it, Heifer's gonna be there with us, Game and Fish, a lot of other kind of area partners. So we're super excited about Spring Fest. I know that um, as soon as that was announced, everybody was like, oh, thank goodness, we're not gonna lose this because families, it was, it was a hit from the first time they had Spring sure. Fest. They had more people attend than they ever could have expected. And it went up a lot the second year. It and we hope did. it does the third year. Yes. We so. help attach to the Museum Discovery brand will help because we're, we're known as a family friendly, fun place to go. Absolutely. And this really harkens back to what River Fest was originally. I mean, it ended up being big rock and country shows and that's great. I love music, but for the families, it really kind of got priced out because of how expensive the, the bands are these days. Oh so, yeah, yeah, absolutely anyway. outrageous. So we're excited. So we're, we got a lot of great stuff going on. I think, I we're, think, so. I think we're about ready to pull off our think asparagus. So? All it's right. like the pasta go a little bit longer. And I'm just gonna drain that right on top of everything else we got going Perfect. on. Perfect, Because okay. it all is gonna work together. So, you know, I think a lot of times people might find that um, when you're thinking about a certain attraction in Little Rock, that it is just it's brick and mortar and you just go inside and do whatever the activities are that they have year round. But that is probably one of my favorite things about Museum of Discovery is they do such a great variety, not only of traveling um, exhibits that come in and out of the museum, which are always really cool and full of interest, but the activities that y'all have done to involve the adults with the science after dark, sure. which for me, I don't... I don't have any children, so. Oh, it's a great way. It's a fantastic one. I've been to a couple of them and had so much fun. Well, I'll tell you, we started that event in 2012 and we averaged 61 adults per 10 times we did it that year. We do it nine now. In 2016, again, I haven't crunched all the 17 numbers yet, we averaged 550 people. Yeah, it's packed. It's people packed. are lined up for the whole entire block to get in and it is just such a great thing. Um, but y'all just do so many fun things and, and kind of keep that creativity level going with introducing new fun things. But you also do things on the fly. So this year we had an eclipse. Yes, we did. And so the Museum of Discovery said this is a perfect time. Everybody is looking to get out and, and see it. We can use this as a fun way to get people into the museum, also teach them a little bit right. behind the science of how this goes. We did, we called it Eclipnik, because it was like a picnic with an eclipse. People That's brought lunches, right. and we had more than a thousand people. We, we ordered uh, glasses, you know, approved eclipse glasses from the internet, and it got rough down at the end. People were begging just to buy the glasses because everybody wanted to see. So that was really fun. We're already planning. I think we're, what, seven years or six years out from the next one. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I think we're ready to do our shrimp. Okay, great. So I put a little bit of oil in the pan. We, again, you, don't, you can just, if you really want to be watching the calories, you can just use Pam or any other kind of vegetable mm -hmm. spray. And this is a non-stick skillet. All our skillets right. in here are non-stick. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I don't want to throw all that extra stuff in there. I'm just going to scoop these up, for you. toss them in. Thank you. And these are going to cook up really fast. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is overcook shrimp. Yes. So really just kind of toss them around in there, keep them moving until they turn that really pretty pink color. Yep, kind of and opaque. And I usually, I, usually, I usually flip them once. It makes me sad when I see people over, particularly they'll boil shrimp and boil shrimp and boil shrimp. One key when you're boiling shrimp, generally speaking, when they float to the top, they're ready to go. All right. So Diana's going to move the vegetables. And again, one more time, substitute anything that you like in the terms of vegetables. I just happened to pick the ones that I like, which are asparagus, tomatoes, and mushrooms. Portobellas, as a matter of fact. <coughs> Excuse me, those shrimp are cooking up fast and good. Where is this? Okay, so just to show y'all, and these are plenty hot. They are still very much steaming. Um, but look how pretty that is and how color. And, and I'm glad you like these vegetables because these are the ones I like too. I'm telling you, all those vegetables in that pan right mm -hmm. there, considering we just sauteed them, there might be 100 calories in there, which, is, right. which is less than a bag of chips. Let me set that back there yeah. so it keeps warm. Less than a really small bag of chips. <laughs> yeah. Small bag of baked chips, which yes. aren't even that good. Yes, exactly. So we're going to just get these 
flipped over one time. All right. And we're going to be good to go. So by the time I get them all flipped, they're going to be ready to pull off. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it might have taken 45 seconds for them to get yep. good and done on that one side. We do have some tongs over here and some. Um, all right. I think I got it. But there we go. Mmm, those look great. Oh, it's going to be tasty. I'm going to go ahead and just cut that heat because we're not going to need it. All right, one more flip, one more flip. And I tell you, we're, we're ready to bring it all together here in about one minute, if not less. Perfect. And, and the other thing is I probably overused the vegetables because, again, it just provides a lot of good nutrition and almost no calories. So you can back those off for if you like a... a proportions that are a little bit less veggie heavy than this, but that's sure. what I went for. But, but if you are kind of watching and, you know, trying to eat healthy, which a, mm -hmm. a lot of people do that, um, then vegetables, adding the vegetables, like you said, is a great way to extend the, the serving sizes. So exactly. Get more. Pour the pasta in there. Mm -hmm. We're pour the shrimp in there. We're going to take the goat cheese. Let's go ahead and get it moving around a little bit before we put it in there. You may just stir while you Yeah, shake. you stir okay. while I just put a little of this in there. Just keep it moving around. Keep that, get that goat cheese underneath it a little bit. It'll get in there and melt. It'll I get in there and so cream up, cream this up nicely. Mm -hmm. I have to say, the first time I was at a grocery store and saw the goat cheese, crumbled I mm. was beside myself excited because oh yeah look at that oh and it smells so good this is some good stuff folks mm -hmm. and goat cheese has a lot of flavor yeah for and it's really low calorie compared to a lot of cheese it's 80 mm -hmm. calories an ounce or no eight, yeah 80 calories an ounce which is much less than some cheeses I hope y'all can get that shot from above. It's yeah. like steaming up our, our mirror up there. But yeah. just in case, get yep. that out. You want to uh, put some in some bowls? Mm -hmm. And you see, uh, that's three servings. And you like how, I mean, we're only going to, we're not going to play even put a whole serving in there. But go ahead and heap it up pretty good. Well, like I, I saved up. I didn't even eat breakfast today because Perfect. I knew that we were going to be. I had a little bit of cottage cheese with applesauce, so I didn't have a lot either. All right. Can we do another one? I may actually just go for it. And it would also be really pretty if you're yep. doing this at home and you wanted to garnish it a little bit. Yeah, you can use a little bit of fresh parsley on this. Mm -hmm. I'm just finishing it off with a little bit of freshly grated Parmesan. And I'm, again, I'm a believer in life's too short to buy the pre-grated Parmesan. I mean, you can buy the tubs that are okay, but if you get the just the can of it that sits on the shelf, it's nothing like this. The shaker kind's only good for like delivery pizza yeah maybe they exactly or those little packs but there <laughs> right. you go there you have it shrimp mm, pasta toss that smells both versatile and i would say from looking at the what we have left oh we we this makes easily four servings that size right so all of a sudden that backs down to about 300 calories per bowl so that one's probably about 325, that's about 275. That just leaves you a little bit of room left over if you wanted to have a nice glass of wine with your yeah, meal. Maybe yeah, small, uh, maybe just a green salad with a vinaigrette and maybe some crusty bread, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this has been great. I can't wait to try it. You Thank dig you in. Thank you so do we much. Wanna, do we want to actually have a bite right here in front we, of everybody? Yes. Okay, there's I want to make, no sure, make sure there's a, a shrimp or a part of a shrimp in your bite. Oh, yes. I'm making sure there's a mushroom in mine. Mushroom yeah. and an asparagus. Mm mm mm. Mm hmm. Tasty. Mm. And light too. Yep. So that's so good. Right. Well, again, I think actually I was talking about the proportions. I think the vegetable proportion worked out just great. I think it worked out fine. It's not mm. too much of any one thing. You right. can get a good bite full of just about everything in every scoop, and so I think that's kind of important for your flavor. Well, I've, I've been on a calorie watching kick here, and this is we're shooting this in January, and uh, that's a month a lot of people do that. But that whole pot had 1,200 calories, so you can portion out however you want. Yeah. And figure out, you know, again, four portions is 300 calories, which is about like a lean cuisine, except more of it and tastier. And there's no preservatives in any there of are not. And just a little fresh. bit of salt. You can only salt and pepper a little more if you want. We just use a little bit of salt. Need it. And I'm a salter. And yeah. 
Well, the cheese brings a saltiness to it. You're too. right. Yeah, it does yeah. have a lot of flavor in that goat cheese. So great. Well, Kelly, thank you so much. Thanks I, for having us. I have learned a lot about the Museum of Discovery today that I didn't know, and I thought Good. I already knew a lot. Well, of you things. do know a lot more than most people. Well, come see us, and I will tell you. You know, it's eight dollars for kids twelve and younger. Uh, Ten dollars above. We have some military discounts and things like that. But a, a family membership, you can have two adults and three children who come for an entire year for eighty-five dollars. If you came two times, it'd be eighty-eight dollars if you paid regular rates. So That's right. We sell a ton of memberships, and we really value our members. You get special invitations to events, um, exhibit previews. We're in fact, we're going to have a preview of the exhibit that's there right now because in our Wow Gallery, we have traveling exhibits that are there usually for three or six months. We have Mindbender Mansion that opens uh, here January 21st and is open into April. Into April. Yeah, and then we'll have another one following right after that. So anytime you come to the museum, there'll be a cool, uh, what we call a temporary or traveling exhibit in the Wild Gallery. And you can get information about what's going on at the museum, their events, their hours, the traveling exhibits at yeah. museumofdiscovery.org. Yes, and our Facebook page is a very active place yes. for minute-by-minute minute news. And what's your Facebook page? Is this Facebook slash MOD. MOD, <clears throat> you, you got it. you search for Museum of Discovery, you can find it. Very good. Well, thanks again. We really appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Diana. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope that you have learned a lot and are motivated to go in and check out our friends just down the street at the Museum of Discovery. It really is fun for the whole entire family. Thanks.